Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Joining me, as always, is my co-host from the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks podcast, Rebellious D. How you doing today, bro? Ready to rock, man. Hey, you, you know, got Ready to shoot some trolls down. Yeah, yeah I see some zombies. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? All like, of it. Hey, you ready to go? And uh, joining us, as always, on our Vox Machina reviews is cosplayer Johnny Five. Johnny, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How you guys doing? Hey, I am ready to go, just like how oh, D yeah. said. Uh, That's right. Johnny, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us up here on these reviews, man. It's always a pleasure having you up here with us, man. Uh, brother, the pleasure is all mine. I love being here with you guys. Hey, I appreciate that. And y'all make sure that y'all go and check out Johnny Five's interview that I had with him on Who's That Cosplayer? It is up here on the channel. And uh, make sure that you go and follow him on all his social media accounts, which he will be saying at the end of... Uh, this video review along with me and D. So before we get into today's review, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks and D, like you say every time. Podcast in the description, like, follow, subscribe to the channel and uh, I need everybody to hit, hit that like button and when you do, make sure that you ask it, is it Thursday yet? Is it Thursday? Oh. <laughs> Eat you to the punch, John. Had to, John. You put hey, you put me on to it. Nice. See, it. I was gonna say, smash that like button. You like you rolled a nat twenty. Mm. Mm -mm. Hey, you better tell that like button he he, he rolled that critical miss. Yeah, but no, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, guys, three new brand new episodes. Three new brand new episodes. I don't know what I was trying to say, but. Three brand new episodes. There we go of uh, Vox Machina, and all three episodes were really good. I it's crazy because I was thinking about this when I was jogging earlier, but it's like the first two episodes are always all right, and then like by the time it gets to the final episode that wraps up all three of them, it's just like man, I can't wait to watch next week's episode. Not saying that you know the other two episodes don't get you hype, but it's like that <clears throat> final episode is just like is that it and. I just always love how it just ends on a cliffhanger. And mm -hmm. uh, these three episodes are really good, man. Um, I really, I know on last week's review, we talked about uh, it's always the third episode that is our favorite episode. But I really enjoyed episode eight where, you know, we got Scanlan's adventure and how he was fighting all of the guards and stuff like that. And he did his thing. I thought that that episode was really cool. Um, of course, you know, episode nine, we get the zombies. You, you know, if you're going to have a medieval show, you got to have the zombies, you got to have the demons, you got to have the dragons and Vox Machina, it touches on all of that when it comes to these yeah. monsters. I know I mentioned before, like, it's just like watching a video game, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's based on Dungeons and Dragons, but, uh, D, what was your take on some of these episodes that we got this week? Man, you, you already know. We ain't rating nothing yet, but 10 out of 10. I love the whole gang. You know, uh, Scanlan, you know, he had his moments. He had a pretty big, um, I guess, kind of pretty big fight sequence, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. Then you get uh, you get some more Percy's revenge in there, which is always amazing, you know. I'm guessing when he's taking these people out, it's like, um, you know, how do you want to do this? As Matt Mercer himself would say. You know, and it's just uh, getting the ricochet shots. It's just amazing. Then you get uh, the villain having the enchantment of uh, Silver Tongue, I guess. Yeah. And um, that was really awesome. I mean, it's just, it's fun, you know? It's just fun. Johnny, your, what were your thoughts? Well, hold on, All Johnny. Right. Before you say oh. something, I want to correct myself <clears throat> on something. I mixed up the numbers. Uh, it was the episode seven was the episode where Scanlan had his side quest. Right? And the episode yes. eight was the one with the silver tongue. But Johnny, go ahead. Yeah. All right. So episode seven, Scanbo. Yes. That's actually a uh, shenanigans that happened in campaign, which is pretty mm. hot. Um, now, it was a little bit different in the campaign, but... Yeah. Most, you know, most beat, beats were pretty great. But what's really cool is that particular episode, um, if you pay attention to the writing credits in the beginning, and I actually didn't until this episode when I noticed it, and I was like, oh crap, this episode was actually written by Travis and Sam. So Travis mm -hmm. being Grog's player and Sam being Scanlon's yep. player. 
Yeah. And so, and so, you know, this, this whole like bit of, you know, Scanlan being this like one man wrecking crew, like going through and like doing all this stuff, like, you know, Sam during the campaign of Scanlan was like going through and this and this and this, and you know, like a lot of, like I said, a lot of the beats were, were like beat for beat. Some of the little yeah. details were different. Um, mm. was hilarious, was yeah. hilarious seeing the, uh, the room that he busted into and a bunch of the guards were playing their own in universe. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that was amazing. That was That's fun. obviously amazing. <laughs> So that was that was pretty great. Um, Scanlan, you know, with his uh, lightning bolt, uh, <laughs> lightning bolt finisher, um, mm -hmm. straight out of straight out of the uh, the original campaign intro from season one. Um, Scanlan has a rather unconventional method for casting spells at times, but you'd expect nothing less of him. No, you would. And uh, definitely, um, almost died when he was pulling his items out of the bag of holding, and. Uh, certain item that he had sung a song about made an appearance uh as he was digging through the bag of holding so well yeah. played well yeah. well played sam i definitely yeah. thought that that was uh dope just just seeing scanlon like have his own little thing because it's like you know he's of course the bard and he's always joking around and stuff like that and i wanted to mention because on last week's review um mag p 1001 they had mentioned that uh, all of the worst kills were in the campaign and scanlon's was created specifically for the show so of course i feel like it's like you know you got to do something special for scanlon and like his his story it was funny it was the mm -hmm. most funniest out of everybody's story so i just wanted to you know give a shout out to mag p for you know leaving that comment and then they also said too that um that Vex and Vax, they mm -hmm. have like a book that came out last year yep. where you can read their backstory <laughs> and whatnot. So that's definitely something that I would love to check out because I know that, you know, we mentioned in last week's review that it's like they're interesting characters and I would like to learn some more about them. So just like how we're learning about Percy and whatnot. And, you know, we finally see Percy, he reconnects with his sister Cassandra and I like how she asked that question. I thought you were going to come back for it. He thought she was mm -hmm. dead. And you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, he kept on, he kept on going. And I just I love like everything that we're learning about Percy. And then, you know, just you know, seeing how it was for them growing up together. And, you know, Professor Anders, like he turned on them because the Briarwoods, they was just like, hey, we'll give you whatever you want. And to have that silver tongue and to be able to control people, man, like it comes straight out of a comic book. And I'm glad that I said that, but uh, you know, like something that you would see in an X-Men comic book or something. Uh, Johnny, what were your thoughts on Professor Anders and you know his powers? You know him turning on, you know Percy and his uh, family. Absolutely love it, and I'm glad you asked because man, I got a lot of stuff that I want to say about that episode too. I'll try to leave it at um, so number one. If I if my memory serves correctly, Anders was actually from a class perspective, he was actually a bard. So his bil his abilities are based on bardic abilities with like this, this silver tongue being Makes you know sense. like like one of those spell abilities for controlling another person etc. But um, going back to Percy and like to to Dee's comment earlier about you know the how do you want to do it and the stuff from the campaign that you know was mentioned by some of the other viewers. Um, there's actually there's a really cool moment you know that that whole the end of Anders where uh, where Percy glares him down and says. Yours was the face that I saw when murder first entered my heart. That's mm. straight out of the campaign, mm. right before he pulls the trigger and just dusts him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and 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 watching and watching that happen in the show is really cool. Watching that happen as like the voice actors are playing the game and seeing Talos and Jaffe like pull that line, like as him and Matt are like kind of role playing back and forth mm -hmm. and just seeing the intensity on, ta on oh, yeah. Talos's face as he's leaving and, and he says, you know, yours was the face that I saw, blah, blah, blah. Super cool. Um, I like the fact that as the episodes are going along, um, some of the stuff that you guys and I have talked about in the after show that like, you know, wasn't trying to spoil, but you know, it was like, hey, how much do you want to know? Um, mm -hmm. We've seen we've seen a little bit more of Percy and the list, yeah. and um, there's a a little bit of an Easter egg that's buried uh, in the scene there. That um, I don't know if you want me to talk about that or whether we should leave that for another time. Well, do you think that that's going to spoil anything for people who you know are only watching the show? 
Um, I think that anybody who's watching the show might start to pick up on some of these things, but there's there's a lot of deep lore with this. There's, you know, because you had the actual campaign show that happened, and then you also had like their own after show where they would kind of go into some of the stuff that they were thinking, you know, so you had like Tox Machina, which was a, a show yep. that they kind of did on the side where, you know, they recaps and they talking about like, kind of like, you know, how did this moment play out? And like, did you guys talk about this thing before it happened and yada, yada, yada. So, um, so with the list, you know, we've obviously, we've seen the names that are on the barrels, right? Yes. We've, we've seen, you know, we've seen Stonefell. He's, he's gone. We've seen Anders. He's gone. We've seen, we've seen the Briar Woods. Yep. Okay. So there's four. There's a fifth name. I don't know whether you guys caught the fifth name or know who that fifth person is. No. Um, I so, remember one of the barrels was blank though when he started. And wasn't one it? of the and one of the one barrels was blank. Was, uh-huh. was blank. Mm. So so as as that campaign was unfolding, there was a lot of speculation as to why that barrel was blank or who that final barrel was for. Um, if you want to know the answer to that, like I said, there's there's plenty of uh, crit roll material out there. Um, but one of the prevailing theories, I'll say it that way, one of the prevailing theories was that was that was for him. Was that the six barrel was for him? And mm, if you watch that I had scene, a feeling you were going to say that. If you watch that scene, uh, when when he's sitting there and they're talking, uh, and he's holding the gun, uh, his shadow. If you look at the shadow on the wall behind him, the shadow is different than how he's sitting there, and the shadow very much looks like he's pointing the gun at his head. Hmm. So that is new. very, very cool, like little detail on that front. Um, there's yeah. a, there's so much in the show that's like you just if you sneeze you miss it, but then you know if you're if you're constantly like watching it or if you're like rewatching it because you know the last two of these reviews we did we all gave it ten out of ten across the board. Yep. And when you give something a score like that, the rewatch value of something is it speaks oh, yeah. for itself. I've yeah. watched I've watched each of these episodes multiple times. I know you guys have as well. We kind of talked yes. about that a little bit too. And it's so cool to be able to rewatch it, know mm-hmm. exactly what's going to happen and then simultaneously be like, "Oh crap, like I missed that like little cool thing or I missed that cool thing and so on and so on." Mm-hmm. So yeah, um I, it, it's yeah, very yeah. rewarding, very rewarding for the people who want the repeat view. I thought yeah, you now, were say that uh that bullet that they have a name was going to go to Barbosa. You know what I'm saying? I thought Jack oh, Sparrow gosh. was going to come uh-huh. get the gun. He was going to toss the coin and pull uh-huh. the trigger. Mm-hmm. Now, Johnny, no, uh, one question. I want to start my statement off with what class is Percy in the campaign? Because I'm watching or listening to, excuse me, the Mighty Nine first, then I'm going to backtrack and, you know, watch cam- or listen to campaign one. What class is Percy? So, is he? Uh huh. So, Critical Role actually started off as a game of Pathfinder, and, mm-hmm. in, and in Pathfinder there was a gunslinger class. Yes. Um, when you port that over to D and D, there wasn't necess- There's not necessarily like a gunslinger class at that point. Um, so he is in some capacity a little bit of a homebrew kind of kind okay. of creation there. But if yeah. I'm not if I'm not mistaken, his his base class is based on the fighter. Yeah. Um, but again, um, that's, I, I'm pretty sure that's, I'm pretty sure that's where that's started. So I was thinking, I was thinking something like if you were using a prestige class, maybe alchemist, that's why I was asking because it was kind of like conventionally, he doesn't really, the closest thing would be like a sorcerer, but he's clearly not a sorcerer based on well, his build also, or rogue. You've also got the artificer, the artificer class. Which mm-hmm. you know the artificer is you know your your gadgeteer type class. Yes, and and yep. so some people and so some people did speculate that he was an artificer, but I'm okay. I'm like I can say with like ninety nine percent confidence that's, that's, yeah. that's not the case. So yeah, I mean because basically all you really have to go off of is his body build, you know. I mean because like you said, the having a revolver isn't really traditional like base level D and D. So I can see the homebrew portion of it. Um, now, simultaneously, though, they, yes. they just released Taldori Reborn, which has like a stats and all the other stuff for the uh-huh. classes. In it. So, so for those for so for those people who like either a bought the original Taldori campaign book, I mean, it probably tells you right there what what it is specifically. Mm-hmm. And in the new book, I know for sure that it does because I, I actually saw like I think the advertisement that they did, and um, you know they mentioned specifically that they had like the stats and the character sheets for all the members of Vox Machina, which is kind of cool. Sick. Now, another thing I wanted to say, too, to piggyback is that 
for anybody who isn't listening to or watching on a weekly, you know, digest of a critical role, that some of these instances and the cool battles, you know, I've witnessed in the Mighty Nine is that these people roll these things and it's amazing that they they just have these sequences that just they fit like puzzle pieces mm -hmm. and it's just it's amazing that they're able to to roll it and take chance and do these things and then now we're getting it into an animated form i will say that it's kind of exhilarating to listen to it as a fan of dungeons and dragons and um just listen to how these things play out and just kind of taking it in and then you know it's only a bonus to get an animated version of it to be honest because being being able to listen to it firsthand and then have them put it in an animated form is amazing it's absolutely amazing it's a little different because they're living a story opposed to just writing it and i think that that adds a special little element to this show so yeah yep. so i was mm -hmm. gonna bring up next um because of course get into episode nine and then having that big reveal at the end where your girl mm -hmm. Pike came swooping in mm -hmm. and yo I was hyped because like they thought that they was gonna lose the zombies were coming in and I just thought the zombie kills were amazing it's like they weren't your typical zombies like these zombies were badass and Caleb she tried to freeze them and they broke <clears> right on out it's just like nah and hey, that ain't gonna mm -hmm. work on me and when Pike showed up, it was just like in Avengers Infinity War, where Thor <laughs> came out of the uh, <laughs> portal and got all the uh, Thanos' minions and stuff. It was just sweet. And she was whooping ass. And then she was just like, yeah, I'm not even really here. This is just, uh, what, what does she call it? It was a, um, not an illusion, a... Uh, it was... It's a projection. astral projection. Yeah, astral projection. Like astro, yeah, there yeah, we go. Basically. Yeah, and she was there with her, man, and it, it was just a sweet moment. And I, I always was. love seeing stuff like that in shows where it looks like the heroes are about to lose because, you know, the Vox Machina, I mean, even going all the way back to the second episode when the dragon showed up and you thought that they were mm -hmm. dead. It's, it's, and Johnny, I know that you mentioned before too, like in the actual game, like that there are people who die and yep. it's like they got to keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see if they do that here on the show. Like if they kill off one of the main characters and bring in somebody new. And I feel like if that did happen, I feel I feel like fans of the show, like they might feel a certain type of way of it. But, you know, people who've been listening to the podcast, they're just like, oh, this is normal. You know what I'm saying? So I think they're I, excited to see it animated, to be honest. Mm, I mean, that's, that's how I feel beat. about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, what was your take on seeing Pike return? I mean, you know, we saw her playing an episode um, eight where, like, they were showing her, like, she was trying to get control of the Everlight again and whatnot. And we see the Everlight come to her, which I thought was cool, too. I thought it was cool seeing her fight the darkness. And again, like I had mentioned at the start of this review, with seeing Scanlan have his little side quest that he did, it's been mm -hmm. cool watching these episodes and seeing Pike trying to fight the darkness that is like holding her back from using her powers and whatnot. But D, mm -hmm. what was your take on seeing her finally return to the battlefield? Well, somebody who played Dungeons and Dragons, it was pretty plain. It was clear cut that they were gonna need Pike. Whenever you're dealing, look, if you ain't got a cleric and you're dealing with the undead, I hope you got a whole lot of blunt weapons, brother, and a whole lot of holy water. So I, I, I kind of saw her coming back, you know, already saw it coming. But it was just the fashion that she came in with was just amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, you need your cleric and she came in with the business. Mm -hmm. So, Johnny? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She yeah, got bringing that, uh, uh -huh. bringing that Annihilate Undead to bear is, uh, All right. you know, get wrecked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were in um, trouble. You ain't got love that. Loved, loved even just the moment. I wish that, I wish that it had been uh, more of a, a feature like just before she showed up. And I love the fact that uh, our boy Percy got to pull out the bad news mm. and just ripped that giant in half. Just oh, like, yeah, that was sick too. Yeah, yeah one man. shot, <laughs> just boom. Mm -hmm. uh, Playing wish, no games. Said, wish, wish we would have got to see a little bit of that while Pike was also doing her thing and while the other people were doing theirs, like so kind of everybody had their thing. But to be fair, again, don't hate the fact that Pike had her moment. Love the fact that Pike had her moment. Correct. Love, yeah. love the fact that she came in and basically like got to save the day. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. such a cool little likable character, you know. Mm -hmm. so, hey, yeah. your boy Scanlon, he was just like, let's get married. She was like, all right. And he was just like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for real? She was like, no. Nah. Yeah, no, nah, I'm just messing with you. But yo, yeah. before we wrap this thing up, we got to at least pay our respects. You know, we lost our boy Archibald. You know, he was a cool dude. Mm. Was like, I enjoyed seeing him when he was there. You know, he was Percy's best friend. And, you know, if it weren't for him, he would have never knew that Cassandra was still alive. And uh, right. I really, because it's like, that we're about to get the final three episodes. And I really want to see, like, what is, what's going to happen with Cassandra? Because it's like, I feel like the Briarwoods, it's like they have some sort of spell or something that's going to probably control her. When yeah, very she's going to turn on her brother and... Vox Machina. And also, too, um, you know, because we didn't really talk about the Briarwoods, I thought it was cool seeing the backstory on, like, how Silas became a vampire and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. uh, and like, what uh, she... Yeah. Hey, look, man. And what's gonna, what's gonna happen next? Because um, she had said something. Uh, Delilah, she said something to him about, you know, like, you're my greatest asset or something like that, she had said. And I'm wondering, like, what's going to happen? Like, is, is she going to sacrifice him or something? Like, who knows? I mean, like, Johnny, without spoiling it, if you do know, I feel like Johnny's like the monger. He can't say. He, yeah, he can't say anything without yeah. spoiling. All right, well, D, oh, I'm I sounded like Scandalin. My voice is about to crack. Oh lord! It's like when you at, talking to somebody, like, oh yeah, I read the manga, so uh, yeah, I I can't say anything. But D, I'll ask you, like, you know, what was your take on you know seeing? Silas become the vampire. What do you think is going to happen with Cassandra? Let me hear. I thought it was awesome. You know, my my policy on things, Banks, is that monsters aren't born, they're created. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, well, here you have it, folks. Um, read them and weep. Uh, I'm not really sure how it's going to shake out. We know Percy's coming for him. So, mm -hmm. hey, bring it on, man. I, I'm ready for anything. Uh, I've enjoyed this show, this journey. So, however they choose to wrap it up, I'll be happy with it. Pretty uh, sure. Yeah, these final three episodes are going to be lit. Yep. And I can already say, uh, you know, across the board, 10 out of 10 for every episode. Uh, but I want to know you guys' final thoughts. And I'll start with you first, Johnny. Like, what are your oh, final man. thoughts on, you know, the three episodes that we got? And uh, what are you looking forward to with the next three episodes that we're going to be getting? So, you know, I'm going to say 10 out of 10. So mm -hmm. I'll just get that out of the way. Um, again, I, I think that there is absolutely something magical when you have the full creative force brought to bear with people who understand the source material, who people understand what the fans want to see, and, and you don't cut corners on your production values. Like, man, they just, just high production values, high intensity, you know, high, you know, quality storytelling, you know, these the stuff that they're putting out is just absolutely incredible. They don't, you know, they don't, I feel like they've cut out, they've, they've had the luxury of cutting out the middleman yeah. that a lot of yep. the, um, the franchises that we would like to see get this, uh, loyal of an adaptation or and with those kind of production values and whatever, like we could only dream that something like this would happen for like some of our favorite franchises. So again, I got to give these like 10 out of 10. Now, oh, yeah. the thing, the thing that I really want to see is, something that they have can kind of like teased at and hinted at over the past couple episodes there's i mean to be fair there's a lot of things that they've kind of teased at and hinted at there are there are things that happen down the road in the story and to know some of those things and to know that like realistically they could have or maybe should have like gone into some of those details at this point but they haven't yet I know that I have a couple favorites of those items that I'm just, I'm waiting for those things to happen. I'm waiting to see whether we're going to get it this weekend. Well, I say this weekend, or whether we're going to get it, you know, with the next three episodes, um, or whether they're going to cliffhanger us and not give us any of that stuff until whenever the next round of, of, uh, a season, uh, of episodes comes out. That's a great so. question. G? That is a great question. Hey, man, <laughs> 10 out of 10. Don't play with me. 10 out of 10. Can't wait to see how this wraps up. Um, I'm curious. Um, one question do I have with the wrap up, Johnny? Does this? I mean, they probably glazed over a lot of stuff, but did they? Did they touch on the majority of their first journey? 
Oh no, you know? not even. No, not even. I close. wasn't. Um, I mean, I see how long the Mighty Nine is. Is why I asked. I'm like, well, well. So you have to understand that, like this, um, this particular, it, mm -hmm. you know, set of episodes, if you will, it started with you know what they referred to as the Briarwood arc. And the okay. Briarwood arc doesn't even happen until like into the campaign, like quite a bit. Like that's that's like like just one one story arc of yes. the larger campaign. And so you know what they've done so far is a portion. Uh, they've done a portion of the Briarwood yeah, arc in these could... first handful of episodes. And so the first campaign is is a lot more than just you know quote unquote the Briarwood arc. So, now, you know, do you think? Um... Now, as far as major villains go, is the Briarwood arc, is that early into campaign one, I'll call it? Or is it, did they glaze I, over any other major villains, I guess? Well, so if I'm not mistaken, again, I'm, I'm going to be a little rusty on this. I think, no I think the Briarwood arc picks up around like episode 17 or 18 or something. Okay. So. Of, of the actual podcast. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know that i can really answer the question about villains without like being too spoilery so that's fine yeah so i'll, I'll sidestep that one and say that like you know in, like i said the briarwood arc if i'm not mistaken picks up somewhere around 17 or 18 okay um and then you know goes i mean i can't i don't even remember what episode it goes to but yeah. but the point is is that um there's a cool story. There's a cool little story about like what's going on, like what these villains are up to, you know, yada yada. How Percy's backstory plays into all of it, and yeah. and we're getting, we're getting like all thriller, no filler, when it comes to like what yeah. we're seeing for this. We're seeing a lot of thriller. Well, and no filler. Yeah, because it's like in in the actual campaigns, they spend a lot of time. They go to pubs, you know, shops. They stay in random town. I get all that. Yeah. yeah, and I definitely agree with the thriller. No filler. Um, I was just curious. But Banks? Uh, I mean, you already know. I'm giving yeah, no it a 10 out of 10. Uh, that's how it's been since the first episode. And now we're all the way here at episode nine. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing like how it's going to end. And I wonder if it's going to end on a cliffhanger. Because I don't know what it is, but... Uh, I just finished watching Archive 81 and we are going to be doing a review for that as well. So make sure you check that out. And like the way that that ended, it ended on a cliffhanger. And it's like, I feel like when shows and movies, well not movies, but when shows end on cliffhangers, sometimes it can be hit or miss because if a show isn't that popular and it ends on a cliffhanger, then it's just like, you feel like you didn't get uh, that satisfaction of how a story is mm -hmm. going to end. Whereas, you know, if something like this ends on a cliffhanger because it is a popular show, you already know that it's going to get a season two and you already know it's going to be lit. So um, I'm just looking forward to seeing how things are going to wrap up. I already said, you know, I wonder if Cassandra is going to play a part in, uh, you know, what the Briar was, if they have some sort of control over her, if Professor Anders did something to her. Because there's no way that she's been with them all this time and like she doesn't have any sort of resentment towards her brother she's not angry about anything she's just been listening to the briar woods and i mean i know that she mentioned that she was giving information to the troops and stuff like that um the rebellion but it's just like come on like it's like you you don't spend that much time with them and like you're like hey percy's back how you been brother i you know like she said yeah. like she said Paris i thought you were coming back for me like uh -huh. he just kept on going very what suspicious. You about to say, D? just very suspicious you know we know how scenarios like that typically it's hard to it's hard to read because of the writing and the way you know the show has gone thus far it's yeah. hard to know if she's secretly under a trance or any of that exactly. because there are no you know they aren't giving us any cookie crumbs or anything really exactly you know no weird stares none of that so it's mm -hmm. going to be interesting to see how it plays out mm -hmm. yeah 100 agree so with that being said thank you everybody for watching our review for vox yes. machina and uh you know make sure that you check out some of our other reviews and stuff that we have here on the channel johnny thank you so much for joining us let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at all right. Well, primarily you can find me on Instagram, Instagram.com underscore Johnny underscore. Oh, shoot. I forget, man. Instagram.com slash Johnny underscore five. There we go. There it Sleep is. Sleep at the wheel for like two seconds, but I'm All back right. now. 
Um, yeah, you can find me there. Um, check me out also with uh, Onway Anime. That's uh, something we'll be talking about maybe a little more in the future. But uh, using anime and cosplaying conventions for the power of good, you know, like real heroes do. Hell so yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. That's right. And you can find me at rebellious double underscore D23 Instagram dot com. Hey, and Banks, if they're trying to roll a perfect 20, where can they find a hero at? Hey, you can find me at Hero mm. Benjamin Banks at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you again for watching our review. Make sure you check out some more reviews that we have here on the channel, along with interviews and reaction videos, podcasts with brand new episodes every Tuesday. The link is down below. Like I always say, keep that pinky up. Stay positive. Happy Black History Month. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thank you for watching a brand new episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure that you hit that like button and you subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content on our channel. Make sure you check out our podcast where we release new episodes every Tuesday and the video of that episode is uploaded on Friday. And you can find new episodes of our podcast on all podcast platforms. Make sure you follow all the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks social media accounts at Leveling Up Banks on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, we have a Patreon. If you're feeling generous and would love to donate to us, it's at Leveling Up Banks. And huge shout out to our patrons. We really appreciate you and thank you for the support. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks.